Guys, welcome to another video. In this one, I'm basically going to show you how I use this formula, right? Or parts of it, because we didn't have to use all of it. Let's say you're tweaking this page and not really starting from scratch. I'm going to show you how you use this formula and explain it section by section uh, in order to make sure that I rewrote uh, Loom's homepage to make sure everything was clear and and uh, more straight the points and it would most likely get them more signups especially when it comes to teams because they're now doubling down on teams and that's what they should do in order to get a higher lifetime value per account. And they basically didn't address it that well, even on the enterprise page. So I'm going to show you how, how I would go about fixing it using that exact formula. So you see how easy it is when you have like a mental framework for this stuff, right? So um, the th first thing at the top, and I'll, I'll compare the bad version and the, the good version. First thing at the top is they have... You know, they have a vague uh, headline, but they have a really good GIF where they show, you know, just this uh, woman going over the quarterly reports and showing how easy it is to record and so on. So visually, they really uh, did a great job of showing versus telling. So even though they have, you know, a headline that is like too smart and wouldn't work that well because it doesn't say much in their case. It kind of works well because it was really supported with their image. So I kept this. I kept it the same. Uh, since in their in their case it would work quite well doesn't because visually they kind of showed everything uh, the call to action doesn't have sign up with Google just because I assume they test this um, for a few years now and maybe they're getting better results if someone actually downloads it uh, on their desktop maybe because it's more accessible and when they download it once uh, they rec are more likely to record videos or whatever they measured right so assuming that's the case, uh, we they we're gonna stick with the download because maybe that's what's working best for them, right? And if that's the case, we uh, will assume it is. Otherwise, you would just show sign up with Google and then the download later, uh, right? So that's that would be good. Um, in this case, I didn't use these three uh, objections either, um, just because I don't I wasn't like fully aware of their uh, compliance and security things that they uh, were concerned of. But in case like I know this is big for enterprise and stuff like that, so I would still have it, right? In case I knew what they were, I would still add these uh, right below the MacBook Pro, right? So that's what, how I would do it. Then I would also show that this is used by uh, 10 million plus users. I think they have like 14 million or something. And then they can say in 30,000 plus companies or 50,000 or 100,000 companies that use it or whatever it might be. I'm not sure of the number. I kind of just made this up and took the logos from one of their pages because they don't even, I, I had to look around where they showed these uh, logos, right? So you would show this instead of just saying uh, companies love this product. We would say they, they, it's loved by all these users and all these companies. And here are a few examples much more specific, right? Then what they do is they start right away by showing where um, it can be embedded, right? So uh, because of the screenshots, uh, because it has a, a video, it's very hard to take a screenshot. So this is what it actually looks like. It's just like you clicking on a link and then embedding it in Slack and Gmail and it kind of works. Uh, so they jumped right into the features right away, which is not ideal. We want to introduce the problem. And I'm not fully aware if they're competing with other tools at this point or competing with email or competing with Slack in terms of this async communication way of doing things. But let's assume it's email, right? Because I, I cannot have their insights. Um, let's assume it's email. What I would use is I would use a stat right away to introduce the problem, right? So you speak two to five times faster than you can type. So why not send a video instead, right? So this long ass email, and uh, I use, actually use long ass email because it grabs people's attention because they, they know it's a swear word and they kind of want to look at it. Um, you know, this is not, it doesn't have that fully professional tone, but uh, it kind of grabs people's attention. So if you don't really care about that, I will use it. In my case, I don't really care about that. So I would use it myself in case Loom was my company. Um, and then I, I showed uh, what is the problem of having these emails is that uh, you have to go with back and forth uh, with these people. It's kind of really hard to write and takes too much time. Whereas, and this is actually a GIF, but because it's a screenshot, I cannot like show the GIF itself. But in the original page is a GIF of this woman going over the goals for July or whatever it was. 
um, and then we show that all the stuff that you're saying with a long ass email, you can say with a two or three minute video, right? So it kind of blows people away of how much better it is, kind of reminds them that all the stuff that they're writing, even if they leave the page and they start writing their emails, they start seeing the patterns of how much stuff they're writing versus how many things they could be recording. That's how powerful it is by having this comparison, always like bothering them and following them for a while until they want to sign up, right? That's how good we can make these. Um, and then I just add the this versus icon and the bad way of doing versus the good way of doing it just to make it more uh, more concrete, right? So it's you can either do it like this or sh or like the original uh, where you show uh, the problem with other tool, the, current, the, the way you're, they're doing it or other tools. Assuming that the way they're always doing is email or Slack or whatever that might be, we kind of, we can um, uh, combine it into just emails, right? Or just the written form. Uh, then what I did is then I started showing the features, like I said, right? So instantly ready to share and so on, um, right? That That's not too um, uh, clear. So what I did instead is Loom videos can embed natively anywhere on the web, right? And I'm not sure about all these platforms, but I kind of just assumed because this is an example, right? So it, has, it doesn't have to be too precise. So I showed examples of all the videos, they, uh, all the platforms they can use to embed their videos natively. So that might be Slack. That might be a LinkedIn cold message. That might be an email that they're sending out to a colleague. That might be uh, within Webflow uh, for their website. That might be a Discord channel. And then I showed 30 plus others so they know, hey, I can embed this everywhere. There's endless use cases to Loom, right? The more ways that people see themselves using their products, the more valuable they think it is, the more they're willing to sign up and pay for it, right? So this, that, that's like a goal here, is making this vision really, really tangible. Whereas they didn't really show the platforms here, then, and they kind of just showed a GIF of sending it in a LinkedIn message, and that's about it, right? Then they have this section saying nothing to schedule, nothing to type. Uh, you know, that's not too bad. And this uh, this image of showing the calendar before and after is really, really good. Uh, this is also a GIF, so that's uh, uh, extra bonus for that. So what I did is I, want, I went one step forward and said improve, co improve communication while reducing meetings. So you're getting the results without the thing that they don't like. Because nowadays, something that is trending is that people don't like meetings, right? So if you're using a tool like this, saying that it reduces meaning and showing it uh, is actually really, really effective. So I back this up with an example from someone they might admire or a company they might admire, where they might say, we are shocked at the amount of monthly and weekly meetings a few Loom videos can replace, right? So we're using this very, very tangible testimonial of saying, hey, I can actually replace these recurring meetings with just a few videos, right? And uh, we actually said that people love it more than meetings because they can watch it as many times as they want, right? So you're making it seem better. So we're getting rid of the skepticism of replacing the meetings with it, right? So we're kind of selling them on the product and reducing meetings and getting those results and so on, right? So it just took it one step further, right? Then we have this one, which is just a woman going over a spreadsheet. Uh, and just says, be yourself, which is, which is the vaguest thing I've ever heard and is really not a good example. So what I said instead, and it actually addresses a big objection that people have with Loom and they never address it, which is crazy, is that if you're camera shy, you can record as many ticks as you want with or without the camera. So what I would do, and this they show throughout the entire website, people showing their face and there are people that do not like to do that. And they don't send videos because of that. They're insecure in some way or whatever, um, which I can really relate to, but I know it's uh, um, that that's the case. So what they could have shown in this video is, you know, because they already showed a million videos, like tons of videos showing uh, like a screen share, they just have the screen share and then uh, them clicking here to make the video bigger or to just have the profile picture or to change the frame or to not have a video at all right? Uh, like a, a face at all or the webcam at all, right? So people can say, oh, I can record my videos. I can like record my voice and I don't need to show up in the video itself, right? So they're like, oh, now uh, I'm uh, way less skeptical of this or way less scared to use it, right? Uh, instead of just wasting all the space to not say anything here, right? Then they have this part where they say more than words where they say, fun fact, people retain more information via video, which is, uh, you know, kind of what I wanted to do here at the top, 
right? Which I, I kind of made a little bit more obvious. Um, and then what they could have done here is they could have known how much better the communication is with video, right? Because if people haven't signed up for Loom, they may not know they can actually comment on timestamps, they can reply with a video, they can react to a, a particular timestamp, where it actually uh, makes the communication really, really easy, and they did not show that, right? So what I, what I did here instead is I showed, um, I made this headline, which because it has like a formula, uh, it really grabs people's attention because in written English, this wouldn't make any sense. So that's what grabs their attention because we're saying video plus replies is, is the perfect, equals the perfect communication, right? So what I mean by this is this video would not only be a screen share, uh, uh, like screen share of someone watching the video itself, um, but then uh, reacting to it, commenting on it, clicking to record a reply, and that would really blow people away because now this is not just a video. This is a true way to do async uh, communication, right? So I also uh, um, try to go over that GIF as well. So I cannot recreate that GIF because they have really good motion graphic designers there. You can probably like actually screenshots, uh, like uh, record your screen and use it as a GIF. That, that works just as well. You don't need a motion designer, but they obviously have one in the team. And what I, what I would do here is I, I was just supporting that GIF that they should have created that I'm trying to help you picture um, with these check marks where it says that they can comment on every video, they re record a reply, and then that's how you achieve the perfect communication, right? And one thing that they did really well, and I, I've kept on, on both uh, side of things, um, oh, it is, they actually have the logos at the top, I didn't even show it, but I think they, they look better at the top end, they can have it twice. It's not really a big deal if they replace the logos with some other logos, right? They have two opportunities to show it. Is they have them, and from here on on, from here on and now is like the same parts. I didn't change it. Where they showed a few use cases, I would show even more. Where uh, they, you can use this to uh, align with the team uh, vision or the code reviews or design reviews or something around sales or feedback on uh, the UI of the product or whatever companies are working on, right? Whatever the most common use cases are, I would show them here. So again, people might come to this page with one specific use cases that they have, and then they walk away with three or four more ideas that they wanna use Loom for, right? That's way more powerful, they see it as way more valuable. It goes back to the point I mentioned earlier. Then they have a few more, uh, a little bit more social proof. I actually have, I would have a slider here and show more companies um, because they only showed it like one person. That's not ideal. Uh, and then, yeah, this is kind of fine at the end where it just says they can get started right away. Uh, I'll probably say you're a couple of minutes away from recording your first Loom video and sending it out. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this makes sense. I'm gonna link the bad and the good version so you can actually compare them. And basically this is taking what they already have now and making every single thing as specific as it can be. So now let's say they have 100,000 visitors a month. Um, let's say half of them were really confused. Kind of works like this image that I have here uh, on my website, which will help you make a little bit more sense of it. So let's say they have all these visitors coming in and then some of them have all these questions about how does it work? How does it, does it apply to them? About the use cases they have or the integrations or stuff like that only a certain percentage of them are actually signing up uh, and just wanted to try it anyways. So imagine how many people, how many more people they could be converting every single month if they were to address all these objections and make everything more tangible like I did in this uh, redesigned version, let's say. And it can even be taken further if I knew all the instances all the insights that their team has, right? So hopefully this makes sense and you can see how I can simply use this formula kind of like a mental framework. And then it becomes really obvious what you have to change on your website and uh, and how to rewrite it and what order to uh, what the order should be and what to talk about and what to not talk about, how to talk about it and so on, right? So hopefully you enjoy this video and uh, yeah, keep it up. Cheers.